Hello, 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 and welcome, welcome to, I guess, we can call this part two of our strips video series. At this point, it's the series where we're going to kind of tackle the problem of the looped strips that were impossible to unfold in our previous video that I've done. So this is the final output that you can expect to have after this tutorial has been finished, or at least the, the logic behind it, this final output. And basically it's going to be um, us tackling the, the, the issue of this purple area right here where a loop is formed and trying to get that to, let's go back in here, trying to get that to show up like so. No more loops, perfectly separated out. So that's what we're, we're going to be doing. In the meanwhile, we're also going to be working not with lines, but rather with mesh patches or surface patches. So it's going to be a little bit different of an approach in terms of creating the mesh itself. Okay, enough blabbing, let's begin. So I'm just going to disable this whole calculation here, and we're going to start from scratch. Right. As per usual, I'm using this as my um, notebook. I guess if I get stuck, I will reference those uh, that Grasshopper script. So we have... Oh, by the way, if you want the Grasshopper script without following the tutorial, um, if you prefer uh, doing it this way, uh, it is available for Patreon supporters. So linked in the video description, check it out. If you support the channel, you get the, all the scripts without following the tutorials. So I will create, or actually not a rectangle, a plane. I will create a plane that starts at zero. And let's say 500 millimeters by 500 millimeters, like half a meter by half a meter, a rectangular plane, just like so. This plane is going to be our kind of constructor plane that we will use to construct a three-dimensional kind of object that we will re re relax with kangaroo. So let's do a few more things with it. I'm just going to make a copy of it to the side, rotate it. I'm kind of going to go fast, I guess, um, because if you don't know how to create planes and copy them, then you should watch my beginner tutorial that I will probably leave again, a link in the video description. Anyway, so I'm just kind of constructing a tube at this point to force um, generation of, of uh, loops, right? Within this tube. So something like that. And maybe we can do, yeah, let's go for Zaha Hadid, uh, how is it called? Wait one second. Second, one second, one second. Uh, now we can go for this topology, right? For this. So you have one tube here and you have a rotated tube here and you can see that they they really tried evading the the fact that you would need to to use looped strips and they did great I think uh, in, in this instance but we will force a looped strip uh, right here in the middle or here in the middle just for me to be able to show you how it you know how to solve it so anyway let's do this as our example piece so I'm just going to copy um, we can yeah we can just copy these three rotate them 90 degrees here, rotate them 180 degrees here, and just move them onto this point. So this is the topology that we're after. Pause the video, follow along, create it. In total, seven surfaces. This is not a double surface, right? So it's seven surfaces in total. Okay, once you have that, let's just reference them in as a surface in Rhino, oh, I'm sorry, in Grasshopper. Set multiple, there we go. 
<clears throat> let me just create bifocals for you. There we go. And now let's uh, construct a mesh out of this surface, right? So the way you can do it is like there, there's multiple ways. First of all, it's a four point surface. So you can just deconstruct the B-Rep and construct a mesh from the deconstructed B-Rep vertices. But a much faster way is just to use simple mesh, which basically takes any um, B-Rep that has four points and con converts it into a single mesh phase. So you can see that the output of this is a mesh with four vertices and one phase. Let's join it all up. Mesh join. Yeah. So now we have, let me double check if, yeah. Now we have the mesh that is all uh, kind of joined into one entity. Uh, wherever the surfaces met, uh, there are still double vertices here even after mesh join. So we need to get rid of that. And the best tool that does that is align vertices component. I believe it's in vanilla grasshopper. It should be align vertices. We do this. There we go. The tolerance for alignment, since we're using like, since this edge is 500 millimeters, we're going to say tolerance is like 10, uh, 10 millimeters, like one centimeter. So any point, Actually, let's do it this way. Any point that is any two points that are closer than 10 millimeters to each other will be merged into one. Uh, so it gets rid of uh, unnecessary points. Then we have our little result here that now we can um, either clean up or immediately or first use Catmull Clark and then clean it up. Sorry, let me check. Yeah, we clean it up now. Okay, so cleaning up process, usually I do two things to clean up the mesh. Uh, first, we use combine and clean uh, from, that is not the one, <laughs> combine and clean. That's from uh, Kangaroo 2. So this is a very neat little tool that usually helps out with cleaning up the mesh drastically. And then the next one is using Catmull Clark subdivision. What the hell? I jumped over a whole damn thing. Sorry. No. Catmull Clark subdivision is not a cleanup tool. What the hell am I saying? Delete that. Instead, unify mesh normals. Unify or unify mesh. That is a cleanup. Uh, Catmull Clark is a subdivision based thing where it basically just um, takes every mesh face and divides it into four faces. Well, every quad and divides it into four quads. Every triangle divides it into three quads. And then if you do it level two, then it's going to take every one out of those four quads and divide them even more into 16. And then the next one is going to be level three, 64. So you're just basically subdividing, right? And that's what we're going to be doing now. Catmull Clark subdivision. There we go. Connect the meshes here. It automatically smooths as well. Let's actually hide stuff. This is in the way. Smooth stuff. So this is level one. Let's increase it to level three. You can't go higher than level three. If you want to go higher, you need to create another Catmull Clark component and feed it into level three. But I think this is going to be good enough, right? So that's our Catmull Clark. This is smooth, but it's still not a minimal surface. I want it to be a minimal surface. So we're going to keep going. Basically, at this point, we do kangaroo stuff, right? This is where kangaroo kicks in. So as per usual, we create a solver, the brain of kangaroo. Solver always, always has a button. And it always, always has a toggle. And it always, always has an ant wine. Basically, a bunch of goals come into Antwine in different data branches. So uh, once Solver spits them out, it spits out the output geometry also in separate data branches. So we need to explode the data tree or tree. Yeah, explode tree. There we go. Amount of branches needs to match up. So one, two, three here. That means one, two, zoom in, click the plus sign, three here. 
that's gonna work. And at this point, we're just starting to construct the simulation. So the first thing that we always do is show. Show a goal, this is a goal, uh, is basically the mesh that is going to be simulated should be shown after the simulation has finished. As easy as that. And it's going to be spit out since it goes into branch 00. It's going to be spit out here in the explode tree in branch 00 as a mesh that and that is the only thing that we're interested in seeing so I'm going to hide everything except the final mesh output and also this there we go that's our first goal our second goal is going to be a little bit more uh, complicated you can do a much simpler version of this where you just specify mesh edges no Okay, let's go to kangaroo 2, goals mesh, edge lengths. You can, you can do this kind of a goal here, where you just say, okay, here's my mesh, and my length factor needs to be zero. So it needs to contract, right? This would work, and you feed it into branch 0, 1, but let's go a little bit more fancy, and let's uh, specify that the contraction depends on the alignment of the lines. So we'll be separating this mesh into warp, verf, directions, where we have all of the lines in warp direction. Let me show you. Come on. See? Let me hide that. <clears throat> hide that as well. This is all of them in warp direction. And this is all of them in verf direction. That's a pretty pretty cool uh, tool isn't it okay so we have two sets of curves and we can apply two different sets of contraction to them like different strengths so let's do it uh, line length or length line this one if i connect my warp curves into line my length i specify that i want it to be zero just zero so they need to contract to zero and the strength i specify that the strength well is going to be somewhere between zero and one so 0 0.5 now i can control the contraction only from these curves right the ones that are green now and uh, so i will just take this copy this down like that so let's make it nicer connect the verf curves into my length line the second length line and now i have full control over all of the edges on the mesh except that i can say that um, curves here should contract should have less strength tensile strength and contraction compared to curves right here this uh i'll, I'll show you how it works uh, after we've set up the simulation because without showing you the simulation is hard let's enable the mesh preview again um, and just connect the lines into branch 01 so or springs into branch 01 so i just connect it here holding down the shift key connect this one here just like that shift key to connect multiple objects okay that's our goal number two goal number three is uh, we can Okay, again, you can do this very simple. Uh, just get naked vertices and just anchor them in place. So you lock all of the naked points. So all of the points that go along the perimeter. But let's go a little bit fancy again. So I'm going to use... Um, basically, I'm going to say that the border of the mesh should stay the way it is except that it should be smoothed uh, right here we get the border we join it up and we actually we we after joining it up uh, we explode it to be able to interpolate um, a smooth curve through the points that we got after explosion and then we say that okay all of those points um that are on the border, the naked vertices, should stay on this interpolated curve, right? 
Does that make sense? They are kind of going to slide on the edge. So as, as I'm doing it, I'll try to showcase it to you as much as possible. Mesh edges. So let's get all of the mesh edges here. We get naked edges, interior edges, non-manifold edges. Okay, so we need the naked edges, which we will join curves into... Well, I think in this case, it's going to be two. Am I wrong? Oh, no, it's one. It's actually one. So this is the outer boundary of this particular shape, of this particular mesh, right? That's, down, <clears throat> that's the outer boundary. So we have that. Um, and I technically could slide the endpoints on it as anchors but let's let's do a little bit fancier thing so now i'm going to explode actually explode the jo joint curves um, and by doing so i know for a fact that all of the points they will be in the correct order right so they will flow along the curve in the correct order because joint curves takes care of that so after exploding through the vertices i can say interpolate just interpolate. Interpolate the curve through the vertices. Like that. Perfect. And we have a smooth curve. So if I zoom in here, you can see that it's not a polyline anymore. It's kind of smoothing. So this is a smooth version of the polyline that we've got. And then for the segments, I will just say, give me the endpoints of the segments. All of the segments that you've got. And basically the start and end points since it's a loop right the end points will always overlap the start points right so i only care about one of these two sets so i'll just use start it doesn't matter which one you use and i'll say okay so the start points you know all of these points here they need to stay on this curve no matter what during the simulation so they can slide, but they should ne never leave the curve. So on curve. Okay, never mind. It's goals on on curve. Okay, I don't know why it didn't give me the the, the the proper proper tool, but here we go. On curve points are our start points. Curve is our curve, and this is our goal. And we just connect it to branch zero. Two into our, into our entwine. So now we have all three of our goals. Let's group this up as well. Ready to go. All right. So now, as I actually, I can show you the. I'll I'll keep the interpolate curve. Wait, does I I never remember. Um, custom preview. Does it color? Yeah, it does. Swatch. Color swatch. Let's just color it black. So I'll just uh, keep previewing the outer boundary of the mesh just so that we're on the same page. All right. Now, if I reset and I run the. <laughs> and I run the simulation, something's funky, something funky is going on. I believe it's these two sliders being a little bit too far away from each other and it's basically being off balance i might have g dug a hole for myself here i'll make sure that the two sliders the two strings are the same i might have dug a little bit of a hole for myself here by doing a very symmetrical object but you can see here it's after running the simulation this is basically what we get and we can see that the contraction strength is like accumulated contraction strength is pretty strong because it's peeling off the vertices from the edges so i'm just going to for the on curve strength for this goal strength i'll just say yeah sure a thousand you know an insane strength and it's just going to now definitely hold right so that's one thing now the thing that i wanted to show you and i, I really hope that it's yeah it, it does work so you can see that now with when I have these two warp and warp components here, and since the contraction here was mostly dictated by warp and contraction here was dictated by warp, or vice versa, I can control which hole is bigger and which hole is smaller. 
just by playing around with the slider here. I mean, it's fun. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, uh, so let's let's just do something like that. Whatever. And let's continue. So we have ourselves a mesh. And notice that... Oh, one more thing. Notice that if I go overboard... Never mind. Hmm. I wonder why did it break before. I assume it was because the... Um, the strength here was too low. Anyway, now it works. Now it works quite nice. So you can... Oh yeah, there we go. It's breaking there. Um, sorry about that. I, I got carried away. Now as you have the mesh, it's time to actually create strips from it, right? So I'm going to... I'm, I'm kind of looking at the notes really quickly. <laughs> um, I'm going to separate it by using stripper component all joke so we're not we're not repeating the joke and here you will notice that i also used move and that that was because i wanted to move away the simulated version away from the from the patches from which the simulated version is being simulated right but in this case i don't think it's necessary so we're skipping over this Right, so we're go jumping right into the stripper component. Hide. Stripper. Like that. Okay, so now we the, this mesh has been separated into multiple meshes that are strips. And if I were to say... Uh, let's color it. So I'm just going to create a gradient. Quick one, gradient. Custom preview. Like that. We've done this multiple times on this channel, so I'm not going to explain it too much. Range, curve, uh, or not curve, list length. L measure the length of the strips. That's amount of steps within the range. The parameter and the strips goes in here. And we end up having our... Oh yeah, and the strips need to be jittered. Because they are, they're placed too neatly. So we jitter the whole damn thing. There we go. And we get ourselves the strips. And as you can see, there, like the stripper uh, component, when it can, it will not give you... Well, maybe it's not even that. The stripper component basically recognizes the directionality of, you know, are the vertices on each face going clockwise or counterclockwise, I believe. Or maybe it's which vertice is the first vertice on each mesh uh, face. Either way, the way on how we can force, for instance, a loop to happen here is pretty simple. I'll just show um, the edges, or not edges, sorry, the, the, the constructor planes. And I'll just rotate it 90 degrees here <clears throat> and rotate this one. 90 degrees like so and that's that's about it or actually no wait that was a mistake no no it needs to be other way around sorry uh so 90 here actually this one needs to be rotated 90 like so there we go and this uh wait that's a z axis rotation and the last one is going to be here. There we go. A def definitely a few loops are created here. Right? So, time to solve them. Solving the loops is actually pretty simple, but you do need to go through the motions of creating the logic. <clears throat> and also, why do we solve the loops? Well, if we try to unroll these strips, it's going to scream at you if we try to use the Fox plugin, which also has an unroller. It's also going to scream at you because these are infinite, technically, you know. Um, well, not because of that, but it's a good way of explaining it. So we need to ask, first of all, which strips that we have are loops? And for that, I will start drawing. 
<laughs> to, to explain it, I do need to draw. So let's see if I can draw here properly. So what differentiates... What the hell is going on? That That's weird. Anyway, don't, don't look at the rotating thing. Look at this. A beautiful drawing by me. Like that. These are polygons, by the way. How can we, with logic, differentiate between this and this? Right? So, so what, what would be the easiest way? Well, the easiest way is actually to ask how many open borders do either one of these have? Because here, the open border is, you know, a, a, a rectangular polyline right here, right? That's the border, which is one, which is one. While here, the border is actually here, a circle, and here a circle. If it's a circle or a rectangle, it doesn't matter, but it's basically, it. this one has two borders. Any loop, oh my god, <laughs> why don't you work? This is weird. Two, two, two. Okay, Rhino needs to fix their uh, vacuum tablet implementation. <laughs> it doesn't work. Anyway. That was, that's a, oh, I can, two, right? So one border here, two borders here. How do we check for that? Well, we can ask, well, first of all, let's, let's just do a mesh here. And we can ask to give it to give us edges, uh, mesh edges. Mesh edges, separate those bad boys out, separate those, sep now my mouse stops working, great. And actually let's work on them, if I remember correctly, I did want to work on them individually, no I didn't, that's okay, sure. So let's not work on them individually, so all of them are not getting grafted. Anyway, we get the mesh edges, we ask to it to join all of the naked edges. Join, join curves, kablamo. Now for each strip, it joined up the curves and you can see, uh, I'm not sure if you can see, let me simplify this. Some of these have two polylines in, some of these have one polyline in. Guess what the two, the ones that have two polylines in are, exactly. So we measure list length we measure the list, l l length of the list. We ask, is this larger, or sorry, is this equal equality? Is it equal to two? Slash slash two, or a slider, doesn't matter. And with that information, because because now, now we have information and the problem is that it's in separate branches. So let's just, uh, flatten that equality it has true and false statements right with that information we can take this mesh or these meshes multiple plural these meshes and we can dispatch them into two lists so these meshes get taken and dispatched with a quality um, output into list a list b what is list a and list b let me show you. Mesh. And also, let's stop looking at the custom preview. That's a little bit awkward. Am I upside down? No, I'm not. Okay. This is mesh A. Or list A of meshes. This is list B of meshes. All of the open stripes or all of the non-loop stripes are here, all of the loop stripes are here. I can even do a group and call it loops and non-loops. <laughs> no. um, straights. Call it straights. 
Sure. All right. So now after this is done, um, we can, what do we do? We need to fix the loops. We need to separate the loops. The strays can stay and they can kind of chill. You can, you can see clean tree. Why is there a clean tree here? We shouldn't. One second. No, I'm just stupid. Never mind. It's fine. It's it's okay. It's fine. So these these uh, oof. <laughs> the straights and the loops. The straights are chilling, as you can see here. Just straight line up until here. They're just chilling, while the loops will need a little bit of love. Um, so with the loops, we need to take basically. And the logic is this. Let me scribble again. Um, in a loop, boop, boop, boop. I'm, I, I ain't gonna draw too many polygons, but ju just enough. This is gonna be beautiful, trust me. Okay, and then it kind of goes here and then beautiful. Okay, in a loop, right now, the problem that we have is that the polygons are not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, blah, blah, blah. Some of these polygons are counted 1, 2, 3, 8, 9, 10, 12, right? So, so they, they're kind of shuffled. They're not really perfectly shuffled, but they're kind of shuffled. We need them to definitely count correctly. So how do we do that? Well, we need to actually work with the edges, not with the polygons. And we will take, um, what we'll do is we'll take the, let's say the top loop. Uh, let's change the color. We'll take the top loop here because it, it does have a certain directionality like associated. Th these are arrows that I'm drawing, by the way. Bam, 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 bam. It does have a directionality associated with it because every curve has, right? And we will take um, the endpoints of these. All right, let's change the color. No, no, not of you. You can chill another one another one okay so we can take the endpoints of these edges like so we we will need to discern which uh, endpoint is where uh, that's fine we will do that right so we take these endpoints anyway we we get all of these points and we say okay now take these points and sort them along the curve and together with the points please sort the edges after those are done we just loft through them and we get a, a loop why are we doing this well that's because then we can say actually do two lofts do one loft between the, let's say this edge which is let's say the first one and the middle one that would be the first loft and then do a second loft between this edge and this edge, right? That would be the second one, right? So it would do two lofts and then we get our separated strips that we merge back into the one big happy family and we're good to go. Easy as that. Okay, so that's the game plan. Ready? Let's go. Okay, so the first step is to get the curves. Uh, which is mesh edges, actually, not mesh curves, mesh edges. We get the mesh edges, we get the naked edges, and we join them. Join curves. After joining the the, the curves, you can see that these are like the, the naked curves. We will just get one of them. We don't need both, right? So list item. And remember, we do have both the top and the bottom curve. Uh, with list item, we just take the first item of the list and those are the um, basically the edges that or sorry 
the perimeter curves that will be used to orient all of the edges along. Right? And you can see that some of them are here, some of them are uh, here. So it, it's kind of flipping, uh, which is fine. Um, interior edges. So these bad boys are going to be the ones that will be aligned according to the directionality of the exterior edges. Let me double check my notes. Yes, they are. So for the interior edges, we kind of need to ask for their endpoints. Right? And we just use again any one of these endpoints and we what do we do we measure the distance so we'll just use pull point or we can use curve curve cp no let's use pull point pull point so these are like the points that are being pulled and the curves are the geometry that is pulling and with that, we get a distance. If I if I look at the distances, most of these, yeah. So sometimes it's going to be zero, right? Which is great. Sometimes it's not. And sometimes it's going to be random values. It's, they're not random. They're basically the edge lengths here, which means that um, the curves are flipped and they need to be flipped back. Right, which means that now if I were to use endpoints here, instead now this is zero, but this is wrong, right? So it's the, just the directionality of the short edges here that we need to fix. The way we fix them is pretty. It's basically these guys, right? Here, here, here. The way we fix them is pretty simple. We just have two versions of them. One is correct. The other one is flipped. That's a flip surface. Flip curve, please. Flip curve. There we go. Interior edges. Bam. So we have, and actually, let's do a curve component just so that it's a little bit easier. So we have the original interior edges and the flipped versions of those edges. The flipped direction, right? Uh, which ones do we choose when? Well, for that, uh, we need to ask, is the distance zero? Or in our case, since Rhino is a little bit fuzzy with distances sometimes, uh, let's just ask, is the distance smaller than? Is it smaller or larger? Double checking, smaller than. Great. Um, I'm stupid. Okay, never mind. We'll, we'll fix that later. Um, is the distance smaller than 0 0.01? All right like that it gives us an answer right um and with that answer we can actually take the the original edges these guys right here and we can say uh dispatch them into separate branches dispatch this list and we use dispatch pattern with smaller than now um I don't remember which one is which. Let me double check. Smaller than gives us false. And dispatch pattern gives us... So false goes out here, true goes out here, I, I believe. Yeah, because that one is 32. One second. Is that? Yeah, okay. So all of the lines in list A, after doing this, they are the correct lines. The orientation is correct. All of the lines in list B, they're incorrect. They need to be fixed. They need to be flipped. So actually, we don't flip them here. We don't flip the with the interior edges. We actually just flip the curves of list B like that. And we merge everything back. Merge. Just like that. Perfect. Now if I were to... I, I mean, I can show you. Uh, if, if we were to do... 
or actually let's let's save time but just trust me on this if we were to pull point again you know do, do exactly the same thing again for this new uh, naked edges or sorry interior edges uh, output this would be always giving us an answer zero and that is important because that makes sure that the points that we have um the endpoints that we will have here these ones the start points here will always always rest on the naked edges uh, that we have selected with list item that's why we're using it okay uh, let's just grab a curve component and drag it out curve e like here perfect so we have a curve component and the points that are resting definitely on that curve component or on those curves right and then we will just say sort uh sort points uh, sort along line there we go this one sort along line so we get uh points that are sorted that are being sorted that's our start points and we get our curve that or curves along which the points are sorted and we get our sorted points that doesn't help us because these are points we for lofting we need lines so how do we get the lines well we just use the indices here right because the points share the same indices as the lines from which they are made. So we get the indices here and E or sorry, after merge E these curves that we, we got after merge, we will just use list item and properly fish out from the curve list, which is shuffled um, the curves with correct indices, right? or in indice not range but like a series of indices in in the correct order order correct order of indices there we go so now i know for a fact that let's say imaginary uh this is curve zero curve one two three four five six you know they are all following correctly which means they will be, we will be able to loft them correctly. Let me double check how I loft them. Yeah, <laughs> just loft them. So we just do loft. Like that. Bam. You can see that after lofting them, actually let me hide everything here. After lofting them, there are a few whoopsies here. Whoopsie number one is this, the gap here. That gap is easy to fix. And whoopsie number two is actually the, uh, the, the the softening here. So all of that can be fixed by loft options. Like so. Where we can say uh, that the lofts need to be closed. There we go. That's a toggle and that the type of a loft needs to be straight segments so type number three straight segments congratulations now we have ourselves some beautiful lofts these lofts of course need to be converted into a mesh and for that we use simple mesh simple mesh bam bunch of lofts easy as that uh, or bunch of meshed lofts you can see it happening uh, where was it that's weird why the hell oh <laughs> because I'm so <sighs> back I guess um we forgot to do one key thing why we actually were doing this. And that key thing is actually taking the loops and separating them into two pieces. Okay, so before we're doing the simple mesh, we do need to take the lofts and explode them. Uh, explode BREP or deconstruct BREP. 
Deconstruct b -rep. There we go. We have our faces here. And we have our face information, not information, how do you call it? Um, indices, like the all of the faces are separate and in their own little data tree and they have their own little index. So we're just going to split list, split list at where? Where do we split it? Well, we will just measure the list length of, nope, list length, list length of our faces which is going to be like 32 in most cases 32 and we will divide it by half we divide by two bam and we feed that into our index and now it basically is going to take that list of 32 faces and it's going to say okay split it at face number 16 into two so that's how you split a uh, strip. Uh, we have 16 here, 16 here. We, now we can convert them to simple mesh. Or, yeah. Yeah, let's do it this way. Simple mesh, simple mesh. There we go. Hide all of that. Let me double check. Yeah, we just mesh join them, don't we? Yeah. As simple as that. Mesh join. Bam. Now these are separate strips. Mesh join. These are also separate strips. I will flatten the outputs of these so that they're all, you know, the same. Oops. Here we go. So that they're all, this is, this is flattened all in the same uh, list. So these are our loops and let's find where the hell, yeah, there we go, <laughs> that, that's our straights. So let's do a mesh component right here and drag the whole thing right here. Perfect. Okay, and just for the sake of it, just flatten this one as well. Okay, now we just do merge. Data one, data two, data three. Yay. Minimize that. We have our resulting 40 mesh stripes. Before we had, uh, how many, how many, how many? 32. So eight extra stripes were created and we're basically at this point right here. And now if I were to show you the pretty colors right here let's go like that and enable preview of this you can see that the strips have been actually separated yay so that's that's the basis of it this is the end of a tutorial, uh, stuff that I will show from now on is just additional material. So if we were to unroll mesh, mesh stripes, I'm using, I'm sorry, I'm using the Fox plugin for this because it also projects a pretty good plugin free in, on foodforrhino.com. So meshes go in here, pack, we toggle that bad boy right here we pack it up we get it to true and now we have what the hell oh come on why does this happen to me <laughs> okay let's reset here ah there we go it was something fishy fishy with the solver I guess anyway it does pack quite nicely and then I can I can I can I can um, take this cluster this uh, very strange cluster let's just copy and paste it I will explain it in just a second connect the, the data dam to here uh, press play here or actually enable enable the whole thing here this is enabled again 
And now if we were to just look at the output of this cluster, we can see the numbering is here, the tabs are here, all of the radii and so on, they are all here. And it's just good to go if I were to bake this out and just drag this whole thing out. You can see that it's also grouped up. Available for Patreon supporters as per usual. Or, or if I were to double click this, this is how the script looks like. And you will notice that it's actually the exact same script as what we had in our first tutorial. So just follow along the first tutorial if you want to construct this. Right? But I, I do like clustering things, especially when things get so long, just to make it a little bit cleaner. Right? Let me undo that. So in this... Wait, let me now jump here. So one, one thing to kind of talk about, I guess, let me stop the simulation here, is how do you make this, you know, how do you work with this form? And the way I would suggest you do is create a topology that works from boring rectangular elements, then select all of them, hit F10 to get points on, and just start going to town with the points, right? Something like that. Perhaps this one can go out here to something like so. Maybe this one is doing something like that. Can this actually go in here and then be dragged out there? <clears throat> okay, we reset. We take a look at it. Well, okay, that, that was a little bit on the sharp side, so it's 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 not liking it. <laughs> uh, but you get the idea, at least. I, I hope you do. Uh, that you can you can create um, an object that is oh, this is ugly. I really want to fix it. Stop. Uh, you can create an object that looks um, like this. You know that that does Zaha did thing uh, by just producing proper. Where is it? Give me a pretty picture. There we go. Producing a proper typology, right? And then simply uh, playing around with the control points of it. It goes long way. Um, of course, also, if you pipe this, it's going to be even closer. Anyway, so that is that. I will leave you with this. Uh, this is what I was working on when I was testing this. Let's reset. There you go. Exactly the same, same thing, only more patches. Please stop relaxing. Okay. More patches and whatnot, but it's the, the the way it works is exactly the same. Arctic does not like this <laughs> at all. But you, you get you get it. You get it. Okay. And if I press play, then we get all of the fabrication data for something as complex as this. Again, Patreon, please help out the channel. I beg you. I'll see you in the next one. Later.